Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. This lesson covers the history of XML. XML got its start as a result of the popularity of HTML, but even HTML has roots in earlier technology. In this lesson, we'll be taking a look at HTML's predecessor, known as SGML. We'll see how SGML contributed to the development of the World Wide Web, and we'll see how the success of the web led to the rise of XML. XML is an engineered as a web-friendly simplification of SGML, which was in turn created to allow for the separation of an electronic document's data from its particular digital formatting. We need to start in the late 1960s. SGML stands for Standard Generalized Markup Language, and we'll take a look at where that rather convoluted name came from. Gentleman by the name of Charles Goldfarb, a trained lawyer and budding computer scientist for IBM, found himself assigned with an interesting task. He had to work with an organization that had a large collection of important documents, and they needed to work with those documents in three completely non-interoperable applications. They had a database of the documents where they could find the documents and retrieve them for whatever they needed them for. They had a text editor program where they could change the contents of the documents. And then they had a formatting printer which would take the contents of the documents and lay them out nicely on a page and print them out on paper. These programs had absolutely nothing to do with each other. And each of them needed their own custom procedural markup in order to deal with the contents of the file directly. For instance, let's say the text editor wanted to call something a heading whereas the formatting printer wanted to call it Format 17, which was defined somewhere as being typical of a document heading. And there was no easy way to switch the contents from one to the other without basically storing information in three different places, which really didn't make a lot of sense. So they needed some kind of solution as to how to store this information in a way that it was easy to retrieve for all three different applications. An idea that was popular at the time was called generic coding, the idea of removing application-specific coding for particular content and trying to find a way to make it universal and generic. So in that way, you could separate the content of a file from a way it was supposed to look for a particular application or even for a user. So Goldfarb, his colleagues Ed Mosher and Ray Lorry, created what they called GML, and it's no coincidence that it was called GML in honor of their initials. Goldfarb later invented the term markup language to justify the acronym, and it became the solution to their problem. If they stored information in a central file using GML to mark up the contents as to which part of each document represented what, then as far as each of their machines were concerned that they had to format for or each particular application, it could be sent to all three machines and each machine would have its own interpreter that would be able to convert the generic form into a form that was customized for that particular application or machine. That way they could store all the information in one format in one place and then simply customize the information for however a particular application needed to use it. This became a very powerful idea and Goldfarb continued to work with IBM on creating an international standard out of GML, which is where the S in SGML comes from. And this work was completed by the 1980s. And there were a lot of space-saving features built into SGML because computers of the 60s, 70s, and 80s were much, much slower and resource poor in terms of storage space than computers today. And SGML was originally designed for organizations that might have thousands, tens of thousands, perhaps even millions of important documents. So if you're going to mark up all these documents, meaning you're adding to the character count of each file, it's a good idea to come up with a way to save space where you can. So for example, if you had an SGML file
which would normally be shown as an element with some content like this, SGML allowed you to change the definition of its particular language. So for example, maybe you didn't need to include the ending tag of a particular element. You can also omit the starting tag if the context makes it clear what sort of element it's supposed to be. They also came up with what's called a shortening tag where you start the tag and then put the content in between some slashes and then that's it. So you can see this changes the character count and allows for a lot of space saving if you're talking about thousands of very large documents. You see quite a savings that way. Part of the problem with this though is that with so many different options it becomes very difficult to program a system to handle all those different options. To look at a particular collection of text and understand what's going on in terms of which format of the of the elements are being used. So you end up getting very large programs that are designed just to try to deal with all the different options available.